All right, in this video, I'm gonna use OpenCore Legacy Patcher to get my 2012 MacBook Pro running the latest Mac OS, which is Sequoia 15.4. Right now I'm on Mac OS Catalina. One tip before starting this process, just make sure you're at the newest operating system that you could possibly get to with your Mac. And then I'm gonna type in OCLP GitHub I'm going to go download the legacy patcher. So I'm going to go to release 2.3.2 and I click on that and then I'm going to scroll to the bottom of the page. Now, obviously they do releases. So if you watch this later, you might get something newer, but either way, I'm going to go to opencorepatcher.package, PKG, click on that, and then it'll start downloading. You can see it in the top right corner. It is downloading. It takes a little bit of time. And in general, this process does take a while. So if you're doing this late at night, you're gonna be up late. I actually did it very late at night. I end up going to bed and that kind of messed up the process because you have to add your password in every once in a while. So recommend you do this with at least two hours to spare so that you can get through the whole process in one sitting and that you don't have to leave your computer alone to think its way through the process. So now I'm gonna go into downloads and I'm gonna open this open core legacy patcher thing and I'm gonna install it onto the hard drive. So you can see it right there, go to the installer, and then obviously you're just gonna work your way through the installation process. So just hit continue, and then obviously install, since this is what you wanna do if you want a newer operating system than you can currently get to. And like I said, throughout this process, you're gonna to have to put your password in about 10 times. So I'll add my password here and keep on going through the installation process. And then hit close. And obviously I'm going to hit the keep option. And now I'm going to click on open core legacy patcher. I'm going to go up to create Mac OS installer, then click on download Mac OS installer. Now at this point, everything's just happening on the laptop. There's no USB or hard drive plugged in and it's going to look for available software and it's going to find your different Mac OS's, which will allow you to select which one to use. But first I get this time machine pop up. I don't know if this is normal, but I do a backup with the time machine for whatever reason. Um, I am gonna just erase whatever time machine save was there. I don't know if everyone's gonna get this pop-up or if it was just in my case, this came up. I'm under the impression you may or may not get that. So now I'm gonna go down and select the Mac OS that I want. And obviously I'm gonna use Sequoia 15.4. It's already highlighted. So I'm just gonna go down and click on the download button and then Obviously, it's going to start the download process and you can see that it goes from about an hour and a half and eventually it breaks down to about 30 minutes it takes to do the download. And again, this is on to the hard drive of the computer, not a USB. Overall, there's about four things you have to do that take about a half an hour each. And obviously, I'm going to skip through it a little bit faster through uh, the video. But like I said, if you only have an hour or a half hour to kill, you don't want to do this. You want at least two hours. So now it's going to go through a bunch of processes extracting the mac os installer and then it's going to say create mac os installer obviously you're going to hit yes computer is going to do a little bit more thinking and now you're going to have to install onto the usb like i said i have a hard drive in there right now but i am going to go back and do this twice because i have some issues with this hard drive so i am going to go back and put a usb in and i'm going to run it off a 32 gigabyte usb when it goes through creating an installer I get, I get an error so that's when i pull out the hard drive and i put in the usb so now i've got the usb in same process and it is a 32 gigabyte usb overall i think the file that i'm downloading onto the usb is about 20 gigabytes so you need something pretty large to do that and it took about 30 to 45 minutes to download everything onto the usb you can see i'm at about 20 21 gigabytes now and definitely I found that it took more than a half an hour to get this whole thing downloaded onto the USB but eventually it will finish and it's going to ask you to continue with the installation so obviously hit continue and then install to disk for the most part this process is pretty easy to follow along with and then we're going to select the disk that we're going to install it onto which is going to be the USB in this case and then just click on the disk that's the only option there and it'll do the install open core to disk 3. Now it's going to ask you to restart but you got to hold down the option button. Hold down option and hit reboot and it does say that right on the warning there. Obviously it's now going to restart your Mac and we're going to go to EFI boot. So if you didn't hold down option you would get a different menu so obviously holding down option is very important. Now go to the EFI boot 
open that up and then we're going to go to install mac os sequoia now if you wanted to erase your disk you go to disk utility but i'm going to keep all my stuff so i'm going to go to install mac os sequoia and then obviously hit continue like i said you could erase your old hard drive if you wanted to that might be a cleaner install but that's not what i want to do obviously i'm going to agree and then agree again now I'm going to select the drive I want to install it onto, which is obviously the hard drive of the computer. And I need to unlock it. So this is once again, a spot where you need to put your password in. And then once that's done, it should let you continue. And then now you have to wait for a while for it to go through its processes. Overall, I found it restarted about four or five times throughout this process. It'll give you the half eaten apple icon and then it'll just sort of restart and go through itself like i said you may have to enter your password a couple times as well and that's where i failed because i went to sleep and then obviously i couldn't enter my password so it kind of messed up the process so i did go through that twice but once i was actually at the computer and could put in the password it worked fine so pretty simple and then once it boots up you can see that i'm now on sequoia you could tell by the trees and then open core is going to give you a pop-up window on your first boot up because you booted from a USB. So I'm going to hit okay. And then I'm going to install it to disk. So we want to install to the hard drive of the computer because when we open it, we're, we don't always want to boot off the USB key. So now I'm going to select the actual SSD from the computer and then just click on disk zero and then just click on disk zero S one. And it's going to run through its processes and eventually it's going to ask you to reboot the computer. I would say by and large, the open core legacy patcher sort of walks you through the process. It's fairly straightforward. It is time consuming and you definitely need a fairly large USB in the 32 gigabyte range. And then open core is going to give you that immediate pop up again. If it doesn't, you could probably get to it by opening the open core legacy patcher out of your apps. But this time I'm not going to hit OK. I'm just going to go and hit cancel. And then I am now going to go to post install root patch. And if you do any updates in the future, you are supposed to go to post install root patch as well. So I'll just start the patch. And once again, this takes 15, 20 minutes to work its way through the process, but eventually it will get there. And, and like I said, there's a lot of, there's a lot of screens where it's just downloading stuff, but it doesn't really involve you very much other than being there to hit continue or restart. So you can see now the USB is out of the computer and I'm going to hit reboot. And now I'm just booting the MacBook Pro all by itself without the USB installed into the computer. And eventually it will start up and now it's just running like normal. You don't have to do anything else. I could check it and you can see that it's running Sequoia 15.4. I've been using it for a day or two now. I haven't had any problems with it. It runs fairly well, although I do have an SSD and I have upgraded the RAM, so that probably helps. Perhaps stock for a 2012, this would be a little bit difficult for the MacBook to handle, but right now I think it's running just as good as Catalina was, if not better. Anyway, thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.